Hi everyone, my name is JP. Today I'm going to talk about Watson X with planning analytics. Um, on the left hand side, we had uh, Watson X data where we had the initial data set. Um, you can use it, uh, as you all know, um, with the benefits of a data lakehouse architecture. Uh, you can connect to various data sources and have uh, all the data available in one platform, in one collaborative platform. And um, yeah, this helps to prepare the data in the first step. And uh, there are several other reasons uh, why you should uh, stick to a data lakehouse architecture with an increasing amount of data. So I think it is a very um, yeah, valuable data source for planning analytics as well for the future. So um, yeah, that's why we also uh, dealt with the topic, how to connect it to planning analytics. Uh, we solved this with uh, essentially a Python job uh, involving the t Python library TM1Py. So we did it in a Jupyter notebook that we could uh, use the SQL queries that you can create first in Watson X data in the very convenient uh, console for that. And then you can use the exact same query in, in a Jupyter notebook with a Python library to load the data into a pandas data frame. And this data frame you can then uh, yeah, pre-process and modify so that it gets into a flat structure that you can then uh, import to planning analytics in the end. And here you, of course, have all the uh, known features available for data analysis and uh, forecasting, simulation, planning purposes. And yeah, it just took one day for us as a team to establish this connection. So it's uh, really straightforward, as long as you have some, some Python skills, uh, I would say. And yeah, that was the what's next data part we did with our team. Um, yeah, personally, I then, uh, went further because yeah, I got somehow hungry <laughs> on that uh, and also tried around with Watson XAI, how you can um, play around with Watson XAI and um, discover use cases for planning analytics. As you probably all know, in Watson XAI, we have the uh, Watson Studio capabilities, so ML ops and uh, machine learning, auto AI, decision optimization and of course we can establish a data connection to planning analytics uh, still in watson xai like we are used to it from watson studio so we have several use cases for machine learning um, predictive forecasting decision optimization still in watson xai but of course we also have the generative ai capabilities now uh, in watson xai and um, yeah I, i've prepared some use cases, how we can benefit from these capabilities in planning analytics. A little um, yeah, high level architecture, how it can be solved. So you would uh, build and deploy your models or your uh, Python jobs in Watson XAI that can involve also the large language models from Watson XAI. You would deploy them on an endpoint and you can uh, query that endpoint from planning analytics um, in Watson XAI, you can use the data from the TM1 database and also the endpoint in, in uh, Watson machine learning instance uh, in the end can also access the TM1 database. Um, can be with a planning analytics on cloud solution or with a, um, or with an on-prem solution. The first use case I was thinking about was uh, back from my time as a planning analytics user. Back then it, it was uh, still called TM1. Uh, I used it in the controlling department uh, a few jobs earlier. And I always personally uh, liked it to slice and dice the data and to pivot it. And um, this, the only thing I, I found annoying always was when I had to answer ad hoc queries or somehow uh, formulate texts out of the data. Um, and this was the first uh, jumping point for, for my first use case. So uh, I tried to establish a solution where you can um, create any view in planning analytics, any cube view uh, you want, and then you are able to put that into words uh, with by, by utilization of the large language models from Watson XAI. And yeah, uh, what you basically need to do for that 
um, like I have implemented it right now is that you will uh, click this button, generate text. So of course, at first you would create such a view like I did it here from the 24 retail database. Uh, you save that view to the server. I called it now what's next view as an example. And then you click that generate text button and you just have to enter the name of the view you have saved and you want to have formulated, let's say. And then you can also provide an instruction to the large language model what should be done exactly with, with that view. For example, uh, I wrote extract the key findings from the table regarding units sold and describe the development. And when I now click OK, uh, exactly the same architecture that I had shown on the slide is now applied. So uh, I have uh, deployed a Python job in Watson XAI and now I would provide this table. Um, I can show it in the Jupyter Notebook afterwards uh, to the large language model and give the instruction. And the large language model then uh, yeah, tries to find patterns in the data or you describe the development of the unit sold and put it into text. And that's how uh, now it came back from Watson XAI and it's describing um, yeah, that uh, the numbers are fluctuating, that what was the highest number, when it was, what was the lowest number, the total number, and also some uh, description uh, that we can somehow observe a seasonal pattern with higher sales in the spring and summer months and lower sales in the fall and winter months. And uh, yeah, you can indeed observe this from the table, um, as you can see. So it, it's really a qualified uh, description and yeah, you can uh, use this as a starting point as planning analytics users to write your texts to maybe uh, later on use it for, for reporting, uh, financial reporting in a monthly or quarterly report. Uh, of course, you should start with low, uh, little sections and uh, validate them. And uh, yeah, but you can somehow scale it um, yeah, with more use cases, let's say. And maybe to get also behind the scenes, uh, I can of course show you the Jupyter Notebook, how I uh, implemented this. So this is my uh, project in Watson X AI. And um, as you may know, you can experiment with prompts in the prompt lab. And I did it. So I, I uh, took some tables and provided it to the LLMs in the prompt labs. And then I used the functionality to save the uh, prompts as a notebook. So I had a starting point and th this then looks like that. Um, I installed, of course, TM1 Pi uh, because we needed to communicate with the TM1 um, on the runtime. And yeah, this is now how the notebook comes from the prompt lab. So uh, you will in instantiate here your, your prompt classes and uh, establish the connection to the Watson machine learning instance. Um, here you can see that I've played around also with the Watson X view, but uh, you, then I, later on I modified it that it will be passed as a parameter and you can pass any other view, of, of course. And here uh, I'm uh, defining the model I use for that task and the parameters. And here I am loading the data from, from TM1 from my planning analytics instance and uh, I'm converting the data frame to a markdown table that looks like that. So this is exactly the same view you've seen here uh, on the left-hand side. And then here's the prompt, uh, also hard-coded, but also in my implemented solution, uh, like uh, given as parameter, so you can write anything else. And this is the prompt that is then passed to the LLM. And here you can see the answer from the LLM that we also saw in the um planning analytics workspace front end in the end and yeah i've implemented this in a, into a python function and deployed that function to watson machine learning so here you can see um the endpoint the deployment if you click on it you can see the url and uh this i i used then on the tech zone environment to um to yeah query the llm with the defined parameters the defined input and 
yeah, this is how you can then uh, operationalize it, uh, so to say. So this was my first use case with it. Of course, we were also discussing um, the concept of uh, yeah the MDX statements because this is of course very powerful. If, if an LLM would be capable of uh, yeah producing MDX statements, because then you won't even need to build the view in the first step because you can describe what you want to see, and then um, the LLM can produce the MDX statement. And this is uh, what something I've played around with in the prompt lab. So here you can see this uh, create an MDX statement for planning analytics view to display the, the desired data. This is the instruction you give in the prompt lab. Then you can provide examples. So for example, a question that could be asked and then the MDX statement that would help to answer that question. And another um, yeah, question then here in your test and uh, the MDX statement that would result out of this question. And with this, I've also played around in a notebook. So this I've just saved as a notebook, as you've seen it before. I used the star coder model because it's rather code generating-ish. So um, yeah, this model is more, more uh, suitable for this use case. And here you can see I've just outsourced the question part um, from the prompt. So you could like get a question from anywhere, like a front end where you could uh, type it in, maybe a chatbot or something else. And then you can insert this question to the prompt, like here it is in the end. And uh, here you get the MDX statement from the LLM formulated. And uh, this MDX statement you can also use to query the data again using TM1Py from your planning analytics database. And then in the end, you will get the same uh, kind of structure back. So this markdown table, for example. But you've uh, now done it with a MDX statement that was formulated by an LLM. And this table you can now use as before uh, to pass it to the uh, Llama model, for example, a chat model, and uh, just tell the model to answer the question with the information contained in the table. And then uh, the question that was originally asked was how many units we sold in that year and so on. And uh, the answer that is formulated then by the LLM is depicted here, uh, what I've just highlighted. So uh, you could define like these pipelines uh, also uh, where you just um, enter a question like did it here and uh, everything that is in between now will be handled automatically internally and you can just uh, give back the, the question uh, the answer to the question uh, afterwards and yeah maybe one more even more technical use case uh, for those that are into planning analytics modeling. Um, I've also played around with uh, business rules and feeders. So uh, it's also possible um, to yeah, let the LLMs generate business rules like here, or even uh, provide just the rules to the LLM, like uh, here in some examples, and then let the LLM uh, just give you the feeder uh, because this is also a very tricky part in modeling and that's what consultants told me it would be great if this could be somehow um, yeah, made easier and yeah, I've just uh, prepared some some experiments here where you can or where you would insert the rules and the uh, LLM gives you back the, the feeders for that rule. Um, of course, this is just uh, always very limited to this uh, to these examples that you give. So you cannot expect to have very qualified inter-cube feeders afterwards. But I think we can evolve to that uh, stage when we get the, the prompt uh, or the tuning studio in Watson XAI, because then we can re really provide one, hundreds or uh, up to thousands um, labeled examples and then the LLMs can be really fine-tuned to get these uh, patterns and your uh, dimensions and uh, elements and, and, and the cubes you are dealing with. And then this really can, can evolve to a really uh, yeah, useful tool. Um, you can give a hand to planning analytics modelers or users. Uh, let's uh, make it dependent on the, on the use case.